Nestled in the heart of Lebanon's Bekaa Valley, a region steeped in history and cradled by the anti-Lebanon mountains, lies Baalbek. This ancient site, a palimpsest of civilizations, is far more than just a collection of Roman ruins. It's a profound enigma, a place where colossal stone blocks, some of the largest ever manipulated by human hands, pose questions that continue to challenge our understanding of ancient technology, social organization, and even the very timeline of human achievement. While archaeologists initially believed there was no megalithic architecture before 6,000 years ago, Baalbek may challenge that firm view. The story of Baalbek begins millennia before the Roman eagles ever cast their shadow across the Levant. Archaeological evidence, including pottery shards and early settlement remains, suggests a continuous occupation dating back to at least the early Bronze Age 2900 to 2300 BCE, and possibly even earlier, into the Chalcolithic period. The site's strategic location, with access to abundant water sources and fertile land, made it an ideal location for early settlement. The Canaanites, the indigenous people of the region, were the first known inhabitants to imbue the site with religious significance. They established a sanctuary dedicated to Baal, a powerful storm god associated with fertility, rain, and the sun. This deity, whose name translates to Lord or Master, was a central figure in the Canaanite pantheon, and his worship was deeply intertwined with the agricultural cycles vital to the region's prosperity. The name Baalbek itself likely derives from this early association, meaning Baal of the Bekaa. The arrival of Alexander the Great in 332 BCE, following his decisive victory over the Persian Empire at the Battle of Issus, marked a pivotal shift in Baalbek's history. Alexander's policy of Hellenization, aimed at integrating Greek culture and administration into conquered territories, led to the renaming of Baalbek to Heliopolis, the City of the Sun. This name was not merely a translation, it was a deliberate association with the Greek sun god Helios, subtly merging the local deity Baal with Greek religious traditions. This was a common practice in Alexander's empire, designed to foster cultural syncretism and ease the transition to Hellenistic rule. Under the Seleucid dynasty, which succeeded Alexander's empire in the region, Heliopolis continued to develop. Greek architectural styles began to influence the city's landscape, and Greek became the language of administration and commerce. However, the underlying Canaanite Phoenician culture persisted, blending with the Hellenistic overlay to create a unique cultural hybrid. The Roman era, beginning with Pompey the Great's conquest of Syria in 64 BCE, ushered in Baalbek's most dramatic transformation. Recognizing the site's strategic importance and its existing religious significance, Roman emperors, particularly during the Julio-Claudian and Flavian dynasties, embarked on a massive building program that would transform Heliopolis into one of the grandest and most imposing religious sanctuaries in the entire Roman Empire. The primary motivation was multifaceted. First, Baalbek served as a powerful statement of Roman authority in a newly conquered and potentially volatile region. The sheer scale and grandeur of the temples were intended to awe the local population and demonstrate the might of Rome. Second, the emperors sought to associate themselves with the divine, co-opting the existing religious traditions of the region and incorporating them into the Roman imperial cult. The Temple of Jupiter, the centerpiece of the complex, was dedicated to Jupiter Optimus Maximus, the supreme god of the Roman pantheon, but also subtly linked to the local deity Baal, who shared similar attributes. The construction of the Temple of Jupiter was an undertaking of unprecedented scale. The temple's platform was built upon a pre-existing tell, an artificial mound formed by centuries of human occupation, further elevating its imposing presence. The temple itself was surrounded by 54 colossal Corinthian columns, each crafted from granite quarried in Aswan, Egypt, nearly 1,000 miles away. These columns, standing 70 feet, 21 meters tall and weighing an estimated 70 tons each, were transported by a combination of river barges on the Nile, seagoing vessels across the Mediterranean and overland transport, using sophisticated Roman engineering techniques. Today, only six of these columns remain standing, yet they are sufficient to convey the awe-inspiring scale of the original structure. Alongside the Temple of Jupiter, the Temple of Bacchus stands as one of the best-preserved Roman temples in the world. Its intricate carvings, depicting scenes of Bacchic revelry and mythological narratives, 
are a testament to the skill of Roman artisans. The smaller Temple of Venus, with its unusual circular plan, further showcases the architectural diversity and sophistication of the Baalbek complex. The true enigma of Baalbek, however, lies not in the well-documented Roman temples, but in the colossal stone blocks used in their foundations, particularly the Trilithon. These three stones, forming part of the western retaining wall of the Temple of Jupiter's podium, are among the largest building blocks ever used in human history. Each measures approximately 64 feet, 19.5 meters long, 14 feet, 4.3 meters high, and 10 feet, 3 meters thick, with an estimated weight of around 800 tons each. The precision with which these stones are fitted together, with no mortar used, is remarkable. The joints are so tight that it is virtually impossible to insert even a thin blade between them. This level of craftsmanship raises fundamental questions about the technology and organizational capabilities of the builders. Even more perplexing is the stone of the pregnant woman, Hajar el Hibla, located in a nearby quarry about 900 meters from the main temple complex. This monolith, left in situ, in its original place, was clearly intended for use in the Baalbek complex, but was never moved. It measures approximately 69 feet, 21 meters long, and weighs an estimated 1,000 tons. The stone's name derives from local folklore, which attributes fertility-enhancing properties to it. The discovery in 2014 of an even larger stone buried beneath the stone of the pregnant woman further deepens the mystery. This colossal block, estimated to weigh a staggering 1650 tons, is the largest known stone ever hewn by human hands. Its existence raises the question, why were stones of such immense size quarried when the already massive Trilithon stones were seemingly sufficient for the temple's construction? The methods used to transport and place these megalithic stones remain a subject of intense debate and speculation. While no definitive records exist, several plausible theories have been proposed, drawing upon comparative evidence from other ancient construction sites and experimental archaeology. The construction techniques hypothesized for Baalbek bear striking similarities to those believed to have been used in the construction of the Egyptian pyramids, particularly the Great Pyramid of Giza. The Egyptians, like the builders of Baalbek, faced the challenge of moving and lifting massive stone blocks. Wall paintings in Egyptian tombs depict the use of sledges, rollers and water as a lubricant, suggesting a shared technological understanding across different cultures and time periods. However, the scale of the Baalbek stones far exceeds that of most of the blocks used in the Egyptian pyramids. While the average limestone block in the Great Pyramid weighs between 2 and 15 tons, and the largest granite blocks in the King's Chamber weigh between 25 and 80 tons, the Trilithon stones weigh 10 times that amount. The King's Chamber ceiling and walls are made with giant blocks. Egyptologists suggest that wet sand could move massive blocks. This solution may have worked at ground level, but at 350 feet above, this is impossible. This difference in scale highlights the unique challenges faced by the builders of Baalbek and suggests a potentially even more sophisticated level of engineering and organizational skill. The global cataclysm from 12,800 years ago could have wiped out an advanced civilization.